In democracies, you can understand a lot about policy outcomes by starting with the simple assumption that elected officials are driven by a desire to win re-election. This is an oversimplification. Of course, politicians have many motives. They care about policy outcomes, about having power in their chamber, and much more. Still, there are good reasons to start with the assumption that they are motivated by re-election. First, winning elections is a necessary condition to complete their other goals. If you're not in office, you will not pass policy, so winning re-election is a proximate goal for all politicians. Second, the politicians who are motivated by re-election are the ones who are most likely to stay in office. Let's imagine that there are two types, those who focus on winning elections and those who primarily care about specific policies. Even if we start out with more of the policy types, as time goes by, those who care most about re-election are the ones who will come to dominate the pool of elected officials. This is the survival of the fittest as applied to politics. Being driven by re-election will emerge as a characteristic of politicians in the long run. This is not a bad thing. Politicians who want to win re-election will work hard on behalf of their constituents. They will write good bills. Also, when politicians are thinking about how to vote, they will be more likely to vote the way that their constituents want. It also leads politicians to invest in their home style. Home style is a term we use that refers to the things that a politician does in their district. A politician's home style includes how they spend their staff resources and their time. It includes how they present themselves to their district and how they explain their votes. Congress is set up to help legislators win re-election. For example, legislators typically get committee assignments in the areas that are important to their voters. A member from San Diego might serve on the Armed Services Committee, while a legislator representing the Central Valley area of California might serve on the Agriculture Committee. Committees help by providing a platform where politicians can sponsor bills and take positions on issues that are important to their voters. They can also focus on securing money for their district that is related to that policy area. Because politicians have strong incentives to fulfill constituents' wishes, their actions will often reflect the biases that exist among voters. For example, voters are myopic when it comes to the ballot box. They reward politicians for things that they have done recently. This in turn motivates politicians to act myopically. For example, when it comes to spending on natural disasters, voters do not reward politicians for money they spend to prepare for a disaster. However, they do reward them for money politicians spend in recovering from a natural disaster. Voters do not give politicians incentives to prepare for disasters, and so politicians underspend in that area. Let's talk about an example from the 2017 tax bill. One of the surprising things was that the Republicans decided to reduce the SALT tax deduction. SALT stands for state and local tax. Prior to 2017, you could deduct all of the money you paid in state and local taxes from your income when calculating your federal income tax. The Republicans put a cap on that amount. This was surprising because Republicans are typically the ones who reduce taxes, and in general, it is politically hard to pass bills that raise taxes. So why did the Republicans take away this tax deduction? Well, the unlimited SALT deduction is only beneficial to constituents in states and municipalities with the highest tax rates. Among the states, the blue states are the ones with the higher tax rates. And within states, both blue and red, it is the larger cities that tend to have the highest tax rates. Large cities and blue states are the areas represented by Democrats. In passing this bill, the Republicans were still being responsive to their voters, who were less affected by this change in the tax code. Up to this point, I have talked about elections generically, but the reality is that most state and national office holders actually have to win two elections. They have to win a primary and a general election. In many cases, a legislator's primary voters and general election voters will want the same thing. However, in some cases, they will oppose each other, putting pressure on legislators to decide which set of constituents they will be most responsive to. Researchers are actively trying to understand how politicians act when facing that trade-off. That said, 
The answer seems to be that they are most responsive to the voters they are most worried about. So, if they're in a district where the general election is not competitive, then we should expect them to cater more to the preferences of their primary voters. If you want to understand what is driving politicians' actions, you need to look to their voters, both in the primary and in the general elections. Because politicians are motivated by a desire to win re-election.